Okay, I have a brand new routine by Warner Miller that he just sent me in the last couple of days. So I thought I would share it with you here. Now I have tweaked just a couple of parts of the routine, but I've maintained the integrity of the effect that he sent me. So for this, you need the ace through king of diamonds. And you have the spectator uh, randomize these as much as they would like. That's important to have these thoroughly mixed. And then they can gather up the cards. Now we're going to have them deal them out into three piles. And as you might imagine, we're going to have one left over, right? Because we have 13 cards here, okay? So this leftover card is going to be their special selection. And if you think about it, it's truly random within this packet of 13 because they mixed them. Okay, I don't have a spectator here, so we'll all have to see it. It looks like it's the Eight of Diamonds. So that is the card they're going to remember, but I don't see this as the performer. Now they're free to stack it on top of any one of the three piles. Maybe they'll put it here, okay? And then they're free to stack either pile on top of that. So maybe they'll put this one right here. Okay. So we have the smaller pile and a bigger pile. Now for this, we actually need a card of contrasting color. Okay. So something not red. So why don't we just go through. Okay. Well, that's a nice one. <laughs> that's a contrasting color. It's black. It's the ace of spades. Okay, so at this point you have the choice to put the ace of spades here and we'll stack this on top or put it on top of the big one and put the smaller on top. What would you like? You want it on the smaller but the bigger pile stacked on top. Okay, very good. Your choice. For anyone keeping track at home, we have some ideas to where things are. So why don't we go ahead and randomize this thoroughly with input from you. So why don't we begin with uh, two random numbers between, let's say, 7 and 14. Because we only have 14 cards here. So can you give me two random numbers between 7 and 14? They could be the same number, but that might be, not be very interesting. You want 8 and 12. Okay. Uh, which of those two numbers should I work with first? Your choice. Work with the 8? Okay. Very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal out uh, eight cards. So one, eight. And then I believe the second random number that you chose is 12. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then for good luck and all that we're doing, why don't we do it a second time? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I remember the second number is 12, right? One. Two, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now just think about it. If you had given me different random numbers between 2, sorry, between 7 and 14, these cards would be in a very different state. Okay. And now maybe as an additional randomization choice for you, you may not know this, but it is normally the case that for a packet of cards that's in play, for some kind of magic trick, the three places that are highly suspicious are the bottom cards, the top cards, and the middle cards. Okay, almost always there's something going on with those. So what I thought we would do is just take the bottom card and the top card, okay, and now you're free to insert these somewhere in the middle wherever you would like. Okay, so wh where do you want this one? Roughly, you know, in the middle. So right here? Okay. What about this one? R right there. Okay, that's just fine. Why don't we spread these out again, uh, since I kind of made a mess <laughs> when inserting those. Uh, why don't we do that a second time? So I'll take this one and this one again. Okay, so place them somewhere in the middle. So you want this one right there. Okay, what about this one? You want right there? That's not <laughs> really in the middle, but we'll... <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. We have them somewhere in the middle there. Okay. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spell out Ace of Spades, which was kind of our helper card, if you remember. So A, C, E, drop the rest on top. O, F, drop the rest on top. S, P, A, D, E, S. 
Okay, Ace of Spades. Well, what has that done for us? I don't know. I think it maybe has done something kind of interesting and unlikely. It's brought to the top our helper card. Now, I'm going to hand you the packet, and I want you to follow my lead and how I spelled out that card, and now spell out the identity of the card that you freely chose. So the spectator would pick up the cards, or if they have you do it because they're concerned about dropping the cards everywhere, they'll report to you that their card was the Eight of Diamonds. Okay, so E-I-G-H-T, O F D I A M O N D S. Okay, what do you think the chances are that your card name has located the physical card that you randomly arrived at? Oh, I don't know what the chances are, but I think they're extremely low. But somehow you have done it. Not only have you brought the helper card to the top, using its name, you brought your randomly arrived at card to the top using its name. Okay, well, there's no sleight of hand. I just want to point that out. Okay, so let's quickly uh, step through this. There's just a couple of subtleties to be aware of, and I'll explain some of what's going on, not all of it. Um, okay, so you just need the eight cards, right? Eight, uh, dot, eight cards. <laughs> you need the 13 diamonds. Sorry about that. So you need the 13 diamonds thoroughly mixed. That's correct. Okay. And then, so I'll just step through it and then I'll point out um, any places that you need to kind of be aware of or be, you know, uh, careful with. Okay. So this is all the same. We have a lone survivor. Now we'll leave the lone survivor face up because that will help you see what's going on and also help you avoid any mistakes, actually. So now it's the nine of diamonds, which is fine. Okay, so you put that on any one of the piles. It doesn't actually matter. Now, what about this Ace of Spades? I mean, how did I even come to that? Well, I just had the Ace of Spades kind of near the bottom. And then I said that, you know, we really do need a card of contrasting color for this effect. So these are all red. Oh, here's a black. Let's use that one. Well, that's the one that we need to use, actually. So Ace of Spades will be our helper card, as before. Okay, now the spectator is free to stack either pile on top, okay? Now there's one adjustment that it's not hard that you may have to make depending on the choice of the spectator. Uh, we'll put the Ace of Spades face up this time so we can follow that as well, okay? Um, so what we did last time is we put it on the smaller one and then we put the big one on top, okay? Now that's kind of ideal for what I'm doing here. So if they do that, you don't have to do that adjustment, and then you just do everything everything that I did. Uh, but if they happen to put the Ace of Spades on the big one and the little one goes on top, uh, all we need to do, and let me just show you the state of affairs so you can kind of get a picture of what's going on. So their card, there's four cards below, Spectator's card, there's four cards above the Ace of Spades. We need those switched. We need the Ace of Spades where the Nine of Diamonds is and vice versa, okay? So a packet reversal will do the job. And a simple one to use is something that I call the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So how it works is you just begin dealing the cards until the spectator says stop and then you go to another pile of course, they won't see that card. That would be normally face down. Maybe they say stop there and you deal a few more. Stop there, that's fine. Stop there and then a final pair, okay? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. So you just stack in opposite order. And with a little bit of thought, you'll realize that that is really just a packet reversal. So it really is just kind of a somewhat sneaky way to hide the fact that you just need to reverse the order of the cards, which we've done. Okay, now we're all set to go here. From there, I asked for two random numbers between seven and 14. So what we're going to do here is an off-centered quad overcoating. And when you do that, it constitutes a false shuffle, meaning it leaves the packet just as it is, which we need it as it is at the moment. 
Okay, so they can choose any two numbers between 7 and 14. They truly can. So maybe they'll choose 7 and 13 this time or something. So the fact is, and you can begin with either number. So when I ask which number should we start with, maybe they'll say 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13, the last one on top. I think the other number was seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you say, well, okay, to ensure that these cards are extremely well mixed, why don't we do that a second time? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And the other number was seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and you'll see for yourself that we've just brought the packet back to its original organization. Now I will add a link in the description below to off-centered coding. Okay, so take a look at what I've talked about regarding this remarkable principle that was discovered just in recent years actually and I talk about who discovered it and where you can go to find his book that talks about this principle. Okay, so we're back to kind of where we were and then if you think about it, after we did that I spread out the cards just like we're doing here. Okay, just like we're doing here, we kind of spread out the cards. Sorry that they're <laughs> twisted there, but um, that's going to bother me too. It's probably going to bother everybody. Sorry. Okay. Mm, okay. Uh, now, one thing that's kind of good to do here, if you can, I'm not doing it very well, is when you spread them out, you kind of have the center cards um, pretty far, you know, nice and tempting you know you can obviously where they see where they are and then the cards on the end maybe a little bit more squished I mean you don't have to but okay and so I mentioned how boy when it comes to card magic often the top middle or bottom is the suspicious place in that packet so I took off the top and bottom cards like that I said well why don't we move these somewhere in the middle okay so hopefully that's enough directions for most spectators put it somewhere in the middle so i mean they can even go all the way over here i mean that's barely in the middle really but the key is you need it within the ace of spades and the nine of diamonds so they have we had four cards here and four here okay and now once that's put in it's probably pretty easy to put it somewhere that's even closer to the center close that up spread it out again now the second time it's almost foolproof unless they're going to be obstinate because you're going to take these off somewhere in the middle okay so they'll probably put this one like maybe there not really in the middle middle and then you can even allow or even joke that they can they can put it all the way down here <laughs> which is not really very close to the middle at all so as long as they put it in the fourth position from either end you're safe okay so it's almost certain to be the case that they'll do that and if they put it like way over here and go uh okay instruction somewhere in the middle is that <laughs> what's your definition of middle you know but most likely they'll put it in a safe place there okay and that's for the simple reason that we needed to and, and warner miller um had a left right dealing that will get you here as well where you do a left right dealing stack the left on the right as many times as you like and then when you're done with the left right dealing do one more but this time stack right on left and you'll arrive right here okay um, but i thought i would just come up with one that ostensibly gives the spectator more freedom and choices in controlling the organization of the packet here okay and then we're ready you're done because now if you just spell Ace of Spades, so A C E, drop the rest on top, O F, drop the rest on top, S P A D E S. You will have brought the Ace of Spades to the top. There, off the camera view. And then, now the secret is spelling any one of the diamond names, any of the cards that have diamonds as their suit, will bring the spectator's noted card to the top. Okay, so technically they could even lie about the identity of their card and it will still come to the top. So nine of diamonds was the spectator's card this time. So uh, N-I-N-E, 
O F D I A M O N D S, and it will bring their card to the top, guaranteed. Okay, well, I think this is a wonderful effect by Warner Miller, so I thought I'd share it with you here. And I'll add some links in the description below to Warner's vast library of card effects that you can take a look at, and the many ebooks containing hundreds of mathematical card effects and other math-based magic, as well as videos to overcoding and off-centered overcoding. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.